We are going to look at a new topic today. Uh, we have so far we have been looking at X bar theory. Okay. The X an X bar theory is a representation of uh, elements and categories within a phrase, and then that tells us how one phrase is connected with the other or how one phrase is part of the other phrase and the relationships among them. We are going to come back to X bar theory once again with new topics, with new stuff that we want to build on. Okay? Uh, and this is why we have discussed X bar theory first. Now we are going to look at uh, what is called uh, theta theory. It, it has very little to do with theta uh, as you may know. And, but then I will show you what it means. Theta refers to theme in the sense that the whole theory talks about how different categories are related to one another in a thematic sense. And this is largely about um, meaning that is semantics of elements in a sentence. It has huge role in syntax, but largely it is related to semantics. So, to, to look at uh, this thing, this aspect of the study of sentence, uh, we need to answer these two questions. What is a theta role and how does theta role assignment actually work? Okay? We come back to these two questions or, or we are going to build uh, our approach to these two questions in the following sense. I want you to know about these terms now and what these terms refer to. The term endocentricity simply means the following in the sense that an XP can only have X as its head. Okay? I, I have mentioned this thing before, but an XP endocentricity stops at Y becoming head of an XP. Okay? Uh, and, and vice versa. We have also, when, when we were looking at a phrase, uh, we discussed how does it happen, how do we decide what all is part of a phrase, how many elements are part of one phrase. This is also somehow related to the concept of end endocentricity that everything related to a phrase, in other words every part of a phrase is contained within that phrase. Okay? So, uh, and in, in, in a phrase, we will have specifier, head and its complement. If there are uh, additional stuff, uh, we have seen an XP, what, what I mean by additional stuff, uh, stuff is the following. We have seen an NP, right? which has an specifier, which has a head and a, which has its complement. That kind of NP is student of physics, a student of physics or the student of physics. Then you saw yesterday, we have a phrase which is an NP and it has an, it has an adjunct to, a student of physics with long hair. Following endocentricity, we know that with long hair in this phrase belongs to the whole NP. Right? That is to say, 
with long hair is talking about the head of this phrase which is a student. Right? Endocentricity guarantees that. But according to the spaces available in the phrase, there is no space for it. Okay? Still, we need to accommodate it only in this phrase. We, we, have, we have discussed these things. I am just putting a name for this. This is called endocentricity. Clear? Is the example that I gave you making sense to you? Yes? Yes? Okay. Next. Uh, I, I remember mentioning selectional restriction to you. I just want to make it a little bit broader and then bring selectional restriction inside that. Selectional restriction is part of what we know as categorial selection. Okay? And that in short is called C selection. In, in simple terms, it simply means certain heads specifically require only certain things. In, in totally non-technical term, it means a certain head requires only certain things and they do not want anything else. I want to show you some examples of that and that is called subcategorization. The, the requirement that a particular head will need only something, certain type of thing, it is called subcategorization. For example, uh, when we say that uh, uh, we have a, let us say, let, let me put it in a systematic way, we have been looking at these things that we need a subject and a predicate for a sentence. Okay? <coughs> then we know that in a predicate, we have VP, NP, or a PP. This could be a potential predicate, right? Now, then we know that this NP could be required, right? That is, it could be object of this verb, right? And then we also know that in the same sense, this PP may not be required. Okay? So, what we are saying here with the idea of subcategorization is this NP is a subcategorized element, whereas this PP is not a subcategorized element. Not a, not a difficult thing. We, we, have, we have talked about this thing again without the name of this thing. This and if I tell you this is an ob, this is a object and this is a required element, in other words, this is a subcategorized NP of this VP, right? I assume you to understand that inside the VP, what subcategorizes inside a VP, what subcategorizes this NP is the head V. Still with me? No issues so far? Can I really make sure that you, it's okay? Right? If there is any question, if there is any difficulty, you can still raise your hands, talk about this, and then we can move together. Sure? Okay. The subcategorized NP, the NP that we are referring to 
as subcategorized element is actually done by the head. That, that's the point I'm trying to make. When we say this, this NP is a required thing inside predicate, what we mean is this VP needs this NP. When we say this VP needs an NP, in a precise way, we are saying the head of, of this VP, that is V, subcategorizes this NP. Why, why do we need to be that specific? Because we want to make sure that other parts of the of predicate or other parts of sentence should not have anything to do with this subcategorization. That is all why we need to be really specific about it. And if, if these things are true, then what is the nature of this V, this head? Transitive, this is a transitive verb, right? All right. That is all is the meaning of subcategorization. And then we say that this V has a, C selects this NP. Okay, this V, C selects this NP, that is all. Uh, we can say these things, I, I, I do want you to keep this thing also in mind. We can also say these things without these terms and we are still good, right? I am only telling you these terms so that when you are looking at books or if you happen to interact with someone else, uh, they, sh they should get an idea or you should know what these terms mean, basically. They should get an idea that you not only know, sorry? I, this is the example of subcategorization. The, the good old sentences that, that we have been looking at, uh, what was the sentence? Uh, like as a verb, like as the head of this VP, subcategorizes for an NP. So, this is an object of this verb, this is an, is an NP of this head V, this is a complement of this head V and this head V subcategorizes for an NP which is its object, that is all. Go ahead, speak up loudly. Bound to have an object, right? Then That's right. Then what is the point of defining something like subcategorization? If we want, this is called. It's bound to have a have an object, which is true. So this is what I am saying. We can say the same thing that this verb has an NP pizza, which is the object of this verb. Same thing can be said that the head, this head V subcategorizes for an NP. And sometimes this subcategorization is little bit too rigid. Okay? And I am going to give you more examples of that rigidity. Also, we are saying this V subcategorizes for an NP. That is this head subcategorizes for an NP. There could be some other heads which can subcategorize for other kinds of element. And in in as a whole that is called C selection. That is certain heads specifically selects certain types of category and the whole process is called categorical selection or C selection. Th these are just uh, uh, names. I, I am again repeating myself that we can say these, these things with simpler terms also. We do not need to really know subcategorization. It sounds like a big name and when you say these names, when you, when you know these names, you sound a little bit fancy. You can scare other people that I know something called subcategorization, right? You ask somebody, anyone who could be a great English teacher, great language teacher, asking, do you know about subcategorization? It, to that person, it sounds like name of a disease. The person can tell you, look, how, what, how do I know what that is, right? But the, the reason why I am telling you this thing is not that you should know some big heavy terms. You should not be deprived of these terms. And therefore, I am adding the rider also, 
So we can do these things without these terms, terms also. And I'm, I'm sure you are familiar that we can do many complicated things with simple terms, right? Anyway, let me move ahead with this. Look at, uh, I, I want you to spend a couple of minutes on this, this thing that, you, that is on your screen. Look at the verbs. Now you know about predicate, objects, verbs, transitive, intransitive and all that. When we have a verb like no, what are the things that it looks for? It can only have these three things, right? If you look at this, it carefully, it is not, not really scary. What it needs is, that is, as its complement, it can subcategorize for an NP. Right? And in that case, in that case, the sentence will be something like John knows the time. Okay? It, it's like a question, what time is it? Do you know what time it is? It's that kind of a question we can say John knows the time. In this sentence, the verb know is looking for an NP. And that NP is the time. Clear? It can also take a full sentence as its complement. It can take a full complement, full sentence as its complement. That is, it can have an IP as its object. Are you are you still with me? And the IP is you can see, John knows that the world is full of noises. I, I changed this sentence earlier, it was nonsense. Uh, John knows the world is full of nonsense. But I have changed the sentence, that is not important. What is important is that the world is full of noises. It is not a sentence. Like what is that? That the world is full of noises. That the world what? is full of Why is this not a sentence? That Okay, that remove that word. part. Remove that part. That, then, it a sentence. then it becomes a sentence. So, if if without that it's a sentence, with that it can only be sentence plus something. No, 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 hold on, hold on. I want you to understand this part. With that, if without that the whole thing is a sentence, mathematically speaking. With that, it can only be sentence plus something. It can never be sentence minus something. Get, get my point? The, the reason why I am talking about sentence plus something or sentence minus something is simply because I have not discussed that so far with you. That is, what I have discussed with you so far is NP. Okay? I can I, I have not given you examples, but I can take it for granted, adjectival phrase, PP and VP. And in addition, I have discussed with you what is called IP, right? And then I have discussed with you some of the things that are part of IP like AGR, AGRP and stuff like that. Right, am I right? What I uh, and and while discussing these things, what I have told you is all of them are going to retain its structure something like this, where you have a specifier, head, and a complement. Allow me to repeat one more sentence. Each one of them may not necessarily have an a specifier. Each one of them may not necessarily have a complement, but each one of them will definitely have its head. Only then you have a phrase, otherwise you do not have a phrase. And this is what we just now discussed that we call it endocentricity. All right? Now, what I have not discussed with you is there are, there are more stuff like this. 
right? Such as this one. That the world is full of noises. Okay? Sometimes we can drop that part. Right? So, so allow me a few more sentences here, which is probably required, is the following. Do you know that there are two types of that in English? If I ask you, what is that? How will you answer? Demonstrative pronoun, right? So, we can say that is a pronoun, is type of a pronoun. Everybody? The true? That is type of a pronoun. Pronouns are used for things, for referring to things. So, I can say that, this, right? Those, these. In that sense, it is a pronoun and more specifically, it is a demonstrative pronoun. Everybody? This that in this sentence is not that one. This is not a demonstrative pronoun. Do you see that? This, the, the element that you see is not a demonstrative pronoun because it is not demonstrating anything. Right? There are several elements in a, lang in a language, as a, as a language specific case in English, there are several such types of elements. In other languages too, we have such things. Right? So, if it is not a demonstrative pronoun, then what is it? Conjunction. Right? Conjunction? We can say conjunction, but it is more than conjunction. You see, conjunction is an element which is needed. For example, if I want to say John and Mary, I cannot say John Mary. I need to say John and Mary. But this kind of thing sometimes can be dropped. Right? And, and I, I, am, I am not uh, focusing too much on the grammatical aspect of it, but some we can we can also say John knows here we here that is needed. John knows that the world is flat. Right? But in some kind of sentences, we can drop that that also. And still the sentence will be okay. So, my argument is this element is something more than conjunction. Now, I am, I am not telling you that right now. Uh, no, I am sorry, I am not going into the details of that right now. However, since we are talking about several terms, it will be nice for us to talk about that term at least. That term is called Can you read this? Complementizer. You have heard the word complement. And this is a new term, it is called complementizer. Okay? Now, there is a huge difference between a complement and a complementizer. Complements, you know by now, and complementizer, the word refers to this kind of element, which is a that. Be, right? Everybody agrees that this is not a demonstrative pronoun. So, this has got to be something. Right? In, a, in a description of a language, we cannot leave something undescribed. So, this has got to be something and this is called complementizer. Again, a big name, a heavy, heavy term, just bear with me. Even if you know, if, if I am I'm, I'm repeating this thing on record. If you do not remember this term, sky does not fall. Okay? What I want you to know for sure though, that there are two types of that and one is like a pronoun, the other is not like a pronoun, which has some additional function, some other function, even this much is good enough. If you can remember this term and if you can describe the same phenomena with these terms, then you are a great linguist. Okay. Now, so with, with this kind of thing, what happens is some, there is something else which is called, what is that? If I, if I just put this thing, complementizer phrase, okay? complementizer phrase. 
And I, 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 I do want to move on with this thing. I, I, I don't have liberty for di digression right now. Can't take a detour, but I do want to give it give it a conclusive shape so that at least you know what this means. CP is more than IP. CP is more than IP because for a CP, how do we get the structure of a CP? How do we get the structure of a CP? Help me. What do we get here? And here C. No problem for anyone so far? And this is going to be a specifier, right? And this is the head and the complement of a complementizer, complement of a complementizer is, can anyone guess? IP. This, this is the reason why I am saying a CP is more than an IP. Okay? CP is more than an IP. You have seen what an IP is, right? A specifier I bar I and VP. Like VP is the complement of I, the bundle of features, IP itself at times, not all the time, at times, complement of complementizer, like that. This is what I meant when I said it is more than an IP. Okay? It's, it's bigger than an IP, it's IP plus something, which is a sentence plus something, not sentence minus something. I, we, we are going to use this thing little later also, no, by little later some other time, and uh, we need to describe some other stuff with the help of this thing. So I, I think that will be handy at that point in time. For the time being, this making sense that the object of a object or the object of a verb like no okay, could be an entire sentence, which is a sentence and more than a sentence. So, so object need not to be, need not be just an NP. Okay, that is one point. The second point is while discussing categorical selection, we are saying that a, a category like no, what category no belongs to? Verb, verb, right? A, a head like no could need at times a CP as its complement. Get this thing? And I, I, I am positive you can appreciate it at this time that what we mean by recursiveness. Okay? We are saying the whole CP could be complement of a V, right? A whole CP could be complement of a V as you can see on the screen. And then I am saying also saying a C can take an IP as a complement. Do you see the, what we know as in real life chicken and egg story? And this is what takes you, takes us to infinity. That with, with these things, with these mechanism, we can capture the notion that a sentence could be infinitely long. That is, there is no restriction that you, we have to begin a sentence with CP only. And be, above CP, there is nothing. So there is nothing like a God structure. Okay? Everything could be attached to anything else, I mean depending upon the need, right? And that is what I am trying to show you here, that in order to understand categorical selection, a head like no, at times take an NP as its complement, at times could take an entire CP as its complement. Okay? And then also it can take an entire interrogative sentence as its complement. I have not discussed with you interrogative sentences so far. Let me not spend more time on this thing. For the time being, I can simply say 
an interrogative sentence is not an IP, is not an IP. However, I can also say with this help, with the help of this CP now, an interrogative sentence is a CP. Okay? An interrogative sentence is a CP. Trust me, I am not simply throwing words and I am not, not simply trying to, to avoid such discussions. Hang on to these things when we discuss, when we come back to IP, CP and interrogative sentences more. We will talk about that. Right now, moving ahead, a verb like, a, a head like ask necessarily requires these kinds of elements, these kinds of complements. What are those complements? It could also need, a, it needs a, an NP. Sometimes it needs an NP, but it is never going to need a CP. Okay? A verb like ask is never going to need a CP or an IP. However, it may need, I am sorry, I am sorry, let me, let me revise myself. When I say it is never going to take a CP, I had B in mind. Okay? But when it is going to allow for a question sentence, but the question sentences are CP. So, let me revise myself. What I am saying is a head like ask is not going to take that the world was full of noises type of sentence. Okay? Which is to say it is not going to take as its complement a CP with where C subcategorizes for an IP. That kind of sentence it is not going to take. However, it needs interrogative sentences sometimes. And likewise, uh, a, a head like wonder, this is also a verb, right? Heard this word before? Verb before, wonder, I wonder. Whatever follows wonder can only be an interrogative sentence. I, we, I cannot say, I wonder you. I wonder the time. These are not grammatical strings for English speakers. It has to be, I wonder what time that was, what time it is. I wonder where we are headed to. These are the, these are the grammatical strings, which, which if we describe or we try to explain, simply means that a, a head like wonder can only take interrogative complements. It is not going to take an MP, NP complement and it is not going to take a CP like that the world is full of noises. I wonder that the world is full of noises is not a grammatical string. Now, the idea for us is not to learn again English. The point that I am trying to make through this is very simple. If we take three examples like no, ask and wonder, these could be three different heads in a language like English and they have certain restrictions on what kind of complement they could select or they may not select. These are just three examples. We can take another complement as well. We can take a complement like eat or read and we can say eat can only select an NP. Eat is not going to select a, a CP or it is not going to select an interrogative interrogative sentence. We cannot say, I ate what time, what chapati that was. I mean, we can say these kinds of sentences. Right? The, the point is, we are discussing restrictions on a particular head could subcategorize the types of elements. Adjectives. It is going to require, it may not it may not, an adjective may not need something, it, it may not need anything. I can say, this computer is black. The adjective black does not need anything else. But if it needs something, it may need a PP as its complement. And the examples are given to you. Look at that. We can, we can say, fond of tall students. Okay? But we can never say, fond the tall student. I 
understand? Right? I can say I am fond of sweets. Right? I can never say I am fond sweets. What does that mean? This kind, this grammaticality and ungrammaticality can be stated in following terms. An adjective needs a PP as its complement and not NP as its complement. Is, is this thing clear, ma making sense at least? Yes? That, that's all is the meaning of uh, A. In B, nouns require PP complements, right? Some certain, when we, when we are saying nouns require PP complements, we are, not, we are not trying to say all nouns will require. We are saying certain nominal elements have a requirement that they are going to need a PP. So, if we need to describe, let us say queen or king or student that we have been describing, such things, such nouns can only take a PP as its complement. If I need to describe a student, it can only be described with PP. We, I can say queen of, blue, of the blue isles, student of physics, we can never say queen the blue isles, we can never say student physics. We, you can argue, we can say physics a student, but that is a different string. Okay? We can never say physics a student, I am sorry, student physics, we need to say student of physics. Okay? So, if at all it is going to require a complement, it can only need a PP as its complement. This is discussed or this is being discussed with you as a sort of requirement that uh, sometimes certain nouns may need a particular type of complement alone, nothing else works. Yeah. This is a black computer. Black complement as a noun. Black is an adjective which has a complement as now, so what? So your question is, what is that? The adjectives if required, they have PP as complements. Oh. You need to look at that more carefully. I am, I am, I am glad you are looking at this thing, but and this is why I said I may not have discussed AP with you. That is adjectival phrase, right? Uh, without discussing it on the board, I can tell you, black computer could be an adjectival phrase. Okay? When, I, when we say it is an adjectival phrase, what we mean is black is the head that is adjective and it has an NP as a complement which is computer. Right? But it could also be an NP where black becomes the specifier of this NP, that this head noun. Is this, Sir, is this making sense to you? Not, not making sense. Tall is inside the PP, sir. Uh, of Sorry? The, of the tall student. Fond of the tall student. Sir, tall is the adjective here. No. Fond. Tall is the adjective. Yes. Hmm. See, look at this example. We are, we are talking about the same thing. Of the tall student, what type of phrase is that? PP. PP, right? And in that PP, off is the head, and what is the complement of this head? The tallest tall student, right? Now, what is the tallest student? NP. NP, right? In this NP, no, 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 no. Fond, fond is adjective here. Fond is adjective. Fond clearly adjective. Now, the tallest student is then is an NP. Is the tall student is an is this an NP? Tell me now. The tall student. Huh? How? The tall student is an 
because the student is the head in the the tallest student. That's what I'm asking you. How? Why is it not an adjectival phrase? No, no. It, the head is not noun. <laughs> If it is an adjectival phrase, then tall is the head of that and noun is the complement of that head, tall. This is how it works. Let me show you. See, we are saying of the tall student. You know so far, this was PP. From here, the question is, what is that? Right? You would want to believe this is an NP. Right? Because this is what you have seen. And that, that, this is what I was trying to answer you. And this is what it meant when I said, I haven't discussed AP with you. If we did not have this one, right? Then the story was different. Here, we categorically know that this is not, this is not an NP. This is an adjective phrase where we have a specifier, A bar, A and NP as the complement. The is the specifier, tall is the head, and again, student is the head. Sorry? Yeah, that is because this is the PP. Of the tall student becomes PP. So in this PP, P does not have NP as a complement. In this PP, P has AP as its complement. Lost? Confused? What's the confusion? The tall as the head of this phrase has NP as a complement. No, 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 no. Hold on, no, no. You're, you're, you're mixing two, three things together. First of all, let me, let me reduce their confusion. When the first thing says adjectives require PP as complements, where do you see that there is no PP as complement? And the, no, 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 hold on. I mean, see. By, by tall taking NP as a complement, what I am trying to tell you is this does not contradict this one. Because we are talking about certain types of adjectives require only certain types of complements. We are not saying all, all adjectives are going to take only PP as complements. And therefore, I am giving you some selective examples like font. Like in this case, you just have font. Okay? We are saying, we are talking about, I, I, I don't think I need to take you back. We are talking about categorical selection. In that kit discussion, I am talking about certain categories need only certain type of complements. And this is called a restriction on them. Categorical selection is a restriction. Okay? Some categories need only certain types of things. Like, like I gave you examples of noun, sorry, no, ask and wonder. Similarly, I am giving you example of font. With this example, please do not confuse that it means all adjectives are going to take only PP as complements. And probably that is what is creating confusion with you that here is a PP, here is an adjective which is taking NP as a complement. True, there, there is no, no problem here and this is not in contradiction with that either. As long as you, are, you can see that the complement of that adjective is a PP. Do you see that? The complement of that adjective is a PP. What we are trying to say, if you have an adjective as font, if you have font as an adjective, it is not going to take NP like this one. It can only take a PP. That's, that, that is an example of categorical selection. And look at the third one. Should not be a problem there. That Preposition will require NP complements, right? On the brown table, I have 
I have talked to you about selectional restriction. Just give me, give me another moment. Uh, which we can, the, the way I discussed with you so far, I, I want to conclude it with the following remark. I have discussed with you know, ask and wonder. The description that I gave you for, the description that I gave you and I called that, what did I call that? Categorial selection. That is a syntactic restriction. Okay? That is a syntactic restriction. If I say the same thing with the following words, then it becomes semantic restriction. What is the, what's the word? Com no, for no, complements must be a question or a proposition. Then it is a semantic statement. Okay? I, I realize that I need to discuss with you proposition. Right? Proposition simply means an statement. Okay? So, so the examples like that the world is full of noise, okay? the B example of no is a proposition. Okay? So, if I am saying a verb like no, a head like no needs a C, could take a CP as its complement, this statement is syntactically charged. If I say no could take a proposition as its complement, okay, that is a semantic statement. The, the distinction is very subtle, very subtle. See categorial selection is syntactic notion, Sem categorial selection is a syntactic notion, semantic selection or S selection is semantic notion. By, de by definition. Similarly, for questions like for the for the heads like ask and wonder, we can say complements must be a question. This is a syntactic statement. If we say they they need they need CP as its complement, then it's going to be a syntactic statement. Uh, we need to we need to discuss couple of more things in terms of restriction, and then. I will discuss with you thematic relations.